Hello, I'm David Dickinson, and on this show, I help members of the public to get the very best price for their antiques and valuables. Will our dealers dig deep in their pockets and cough up today, or do I need to encourage them? I've heard the call. <laughs> it's our dealer being a little bit mean. Don't you think they'd get more at auction? Don't you think they'd get more at auction? You know what that means, don't you? Get off to auction. <laughs> a great crowd's turned up. They brought along their treasures. They want to do business. You know why they're here. They want to walk away with the real deal. We're in Bradford today and the den doors are open, ready for business. Debbie and her son Jay are first up to see Tim Hogarth and he's very excited about what they've brought in. Lovely, lovely Art Nouveau clock. It really ticks my box and I will pay, if I have to, up to £200. This could be a great start to the day. I'm really, really liking your clock. It's beautiful. Tell me about it, how you got it. Um, we bought it online with quite a substantial amount of other things mm. to then sell at Car Boots. I decided to have a little rummage yeah. when we got them in the shed. As you do, yeah, I like a rummage while myself. He at, while he was at home, I couldn't believe what I saw, what I got out of the bag. So you had no idea that no. this was in this job lot? I, and, and I want to keep it. You want to keep it? Well, she I wanted to, to keep, keep it, it, but, but it won't let me. You do? I want to buy it. <laughs> I know. Do you want to buy it a lot? I like it. I do. I like I it. I like it. Beautiful. It is. Yeah. I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. Yes, yeah, please, because I don't know an awful lot. I well, just know it's Art Nouveau. You're absolutely spot on. Art Nouveau, all this lovely naturalistic really yeah. that's that's the word yeah. that you would say so we're talking 1900 1905 it might be even a little bit later pushing mm -hmm. into the 1910s it is copper the clock yeah uh, beaten well. copper yeah uh, and you can tell by the colouring of it and it this clock is in a style of um, a very well-known London retailer called Liberty and Company I was hoping it might have been Liberty, but I don't Unfortunately, think it Unfortunately, Debbie, it's I know, not Liberty's. I know. Yeah. It would have been nice. It would have been absolutely fantastic mm. because we would have been talking a lot of money had it been by I did Liberty's. Look. I did look. Yeah. Closer. And the, the, the man who designed for, for Liberty's was a man called Archibald oh, no. Knox. You know it all, Debbie, don't you? A little bit. Yeah. I already know a little she bit. She loves her Just Just share. Um, condition, it's not. That lets it's it down a little clock. bit. It's, yeah. it's missing a hand and some of the, the, the letters that have gone off. Mm. Does it work? No. no it We've got the rest of the bits in a little box. <laughs> right. So it's all about the money, isn't it, really? Mm. It is. Have you got high expectations? Not huge. Have you, Jay? Reasonable. Reasonable. <laughs> so yours aren't huge and yours are reasonable. Yeah. Right, so how about £50? Pounds? No. It's yeah. worth quite a bit more than that, I think. Quite a bit more. Yeah. What about a hundred pounds? You're getting warm. I think I'm getting red hot. Oh, no. A hundred and fifty pounds. That's very generous. That's very generous. But it's a very nice clock. <laughs> So, could you just put a little bit more on? Maybe not one of the pink ones. Purple one. <laughs> a purple one of the next. A purple one. I have to buy this clock. You know that, don't you? I want to buy it. Then you could put me another pink one down there. Yeah, steady on, Debbie, now. <laughs> steady on. 170. And I'm going to go 180. I'm happy with that. I think you bought yourself a clock. Thank you very much. I'm very happy. And I'm very happy. Thank you. And Thank I just you. need to know this. How much did you pay for the job lot? £60. <laughs> oh.
head over the odds for this clock because sometimes in antiques you've got to use your imagination and I can see this clock when it's the finished item, when it's back to how it was originally and it will be fabulous. Let's hope your customers get as excited as you, Tim. Across the den, Brian is rubbing shoulders with Joe Brayshaw. I brought some epaulettes in today. They're not military, I think they're very special, and I'm hoping to get at least £100 for them. They fascinate me because they come from a glamorous age, so I would really like to buy them. They'd really suit a stylish lady like you, Joe. Epaulettes, for, um, were, as we all know, were worn here for when people were showing off, basically, weren't they? That's true. <laughs> and you know anything about them? Yes, the Victorian, and uh, I believe them to be the Lord Lieutenant of Ireland for the Irish counties in 1890s. Right. So, well, just so have a look, look at them, because yes, I, can, I understand the Irish connection, because we've got the shamrock is in the uh, gilt wire work. We've got the original box with the plaque on, um, with the name of the company in London. 30 King Street, Covent Gardens. Yes. That company was founded in 1750 and produced epaulets and swords in London. Right. I think they're fabulous, right? I think they're fabulous. Um, just one of those lovely quirky things that in our trade you, get, you come across now and again and, and that's what I like about them. Yes. The thing that I have with them is what do you do with them? Yes. That's the difficulty <laughs> with them. They're not a military item, they're a civilian item. You see, the military guys, you've got a whole world of collectors there. Mm. So, I'm not quite sure where their market is, other than someone else's Well, attic. I would imagine that they're quite rare, really. They possibly are. And I'm sure there are collectors out there that would... They may well be, but I, I have yet that to find out or they not. They may come into your shop and buy they may, them. They may, they may not. Yes. We can find out. We will find out. Right, how much do you want for them? Well, as much as you can spare. You're such a nice lady, I'm oh, sure it'll be good. That's not going to work. It's a good try, but it's no, not going to work. No. <laughs> we'll start with £100. Well, that, that's a nice start. Little way to go yet. That's for you to decide, not me. 120 How much do you think I can get for that? £140. I would like a little bit more, if it's possible. Please. Fifty pounds. Would you like to have one with David? Well, well I heard, would. Yes, thank you. I've heard the call. Um, I saw these arriving. They are superb quality. They are in very, very nice condition. The estimate is one hundred to one fifty, and you are right on the money, Joe. I'm going to say no hesitation, sir accept that £150 right away. Thank you, David. So, you've heard David's advice. Yes. Um, where are we going to go? Well, I think that's a fair offer, mm. and I will accept your offer. OK. Thank you very much. Thank and you very, very much. it's very nice to meet you. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Joe was very interesting. She's a very nice person and I think she made a good offer. Yay, I own the epaulets. I may be buried with them, but I own them. And David needs your help with Brenda. Shout out in your living rooms. Get the purse open, get the purse. That's right, get the purse open, yes. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. And at Brenda Haller's table, some American TV merchandise has turned up. I brought in several items of Dick Clark memorabilia, which were donated to the charity where I work. So we're hoping to get a good price for them today. Dick Clark was very, very famous. He's recently died, so I wonder if these might be a hot ticket. Ah, oh, sounds promising. Hello Claire. Hiya. I'm not going to stretch over because I might knock all these <laughs> items down. So, are we a collector? 
No, um, these were donated to the charity that I work for. The oh, Roy and Castle, what's the charity? The Roy Castle Lung Cancer Foundation. Oh, the Roy Castle. S yes. Lovely so man. I'm selling them today on behalf okay. of the charity. So did somebody bring them in? Yeah, yeah, they were donated to us, quite okay. a lot. Of. And that person was a collector? Um, it was somebody that wanted to remain anonymous. Oh. So, a bit mysterious. Oh, very mysterious. Is, yes. Wow. Intrigue. <laughs> so is this all the collection? No, there is, there's about 11 items in total. In so total? A few more, yeah. Okay. This is an American who started um, a television programme which was very similar to the Des O'Connor show. Right. Yeah. So if you can imagine, there's singing and dancing going on, a real variety show. Yeah. And it started in the 50s and went through to the late 80s. So he made over 3,000 shows. So very prolific. Yeah. And there was masses of stuff out there in the American market. Because you can imagine, if he's on television four or five times a week, then years, yeah. he's going to be very popular, isn't yeah. he? Yeah. So there's a lot of this out there. Right. Not a lot of it in England, okay. uh, because obviously it would be the Americans that are collecting it more. Yeah. Um, so I don't know what to do with this really and where I go from. I'm going to put a little bit of money on the table. Okay. And then you can say stop when you think it's enough. Right. But you won't, will you? No, probably so that's not. a useless thing to say, <laughs> isn't it, really? Here we go. 20. 40 50 Come on Claire, give me a vibe of some it's sort It's very difficult when I'm doing it for the charity I know. It's not my money I know um, We're like two lost sheep, aren't we? We are mm. Yes, we are 60 pounds I'm not going to go too much more, Claire, to be honest. I'm going to go another £10. I'm going to say £70 because I don't know whether I've got a market for this. Right, Claire, so this is for charity, obviously. It is. The Roy Castle Trust. 100 to 150 is what our independent valuers are saying. It is very comprehensive. There's a lot of it. There is 70 quid on the table here. Now, I normally say, Brenda, come on, open that purse up, put some more money. It's a real difficult one, this, because the girl's got to sell it again. And I just don't know how commercial this is, Brenda. You can take your chances at auction unless we turn to Brenda. Now, this is something which is a bit tricky, and we say it is for charity. If I was to put another 20 in, would you put 20 in? Don't you think they'd get more at auction? Don't you think they'd get more at auction? You know what that means, don't you? Get off to auction! <laughs> I think you could do miracles with this. I think we could come unstuck at the auction. That's my only worry. Oh, right. Confuse me even more now. Shout out in your living rooms. Get the purse open! Get the purse... That's right. Get the purse open! Yes. All you can hear them now, Brenda. <laughs> I'm going to put 20. OK. I'm also going to put £20 down there as well. And Perfect. I'm going to say, on that, say, thank you, Brenda. Say, thank you, Brenda. <laughs> Most generous <laughs> no. for keeping the purse open. <laughs> You've done it again. And thank you very much. <laughs> and I think on the day, that's the best offer you'll get. A good cause. It is a very good cause. It is. I'm going to say it's a deal. Thank it's you It's got much. to be a deal. Thank you. We're really pleased with the deal. Uh, it'll go a long way towards helping the Royal Castle Lung Cancer Foundation. It was a good day. Am I ever going to get rid of these? I'm not sure. If there's anybody out there, you can buy it from me. Oh, come on, Brenda. We're sure you'll find a buyer. Hi, I'm David Hackney. You now, Kevin has brought David a historical hanky. I paid 20 in auction, so I saw it on the wall and I thought, that looks quite interesting. Let's see if you can get a profit then, Kevin. You've brought uh, a picture in here. What is it? It's, well, a souvenir of Egypt, as it states. Um, I believe it's a silk handkerchief from First World War area. 1914-18, yeah. yeah. 
Mm. So. Is this something that's been in the family or? No, I recently purchased a school auction. The school mm. auction? Mm. It, how recent? Uh, a couple of months back. Oh, you haven't had it too long then? No. I think it's a very interesting item, silk handkerchief, and it's got all the well, King George V here of England and uh, King of Italy here. This is where the First World War started here, Peter Garovic of Serbia, and so on. I can't read these from there. Hussein, Egypt. Egypt, is it? Hussein, Nicholas II, Russia. Russia, yes. And this one. And Raymond Ponica, President yeah. of France. Interesting, isn't it? In lovely condition. It hasn't faded. The colours are nice and bright. And uh, for people that like sort of, you know, this sort of subject, I suppose it's a quite a good yeah. example, isn't it, Kevin? Is it worth a lot of money? You tell me. I know <laughs> what I paid for it, so. <laughs> I'll get the cash out and see if we can tempt you, Kevin. Okay. 10, 20 quid. No. Let's say 25 quid. Just to make it not sound too mean, Kevin. Put another 10 on and you. Mm, I don't think I'd want to. I think I'd want to knock this out with a quick 30 pounds, I'll be honest with you. But I mean, I do think that it could do a lot better in an auction. Do another five and. Kevin, I'm sorry, that's all I'd want to offer for it. Right, in that case, I think we'll go to auction. To auction? Yeah. I hope you do well. I'm sure you will. I think it's a nice item. Okay, thank you. Thanks for bringing it along, Kevin. Thank you. I do think this will do quite well in the auction because it's in immaculate condition, the colours and its condition. Probably ought to bid a bit more for it, really. It's too late now, David, unless you're going to come down to the sale room. Auctioneer Rob Lee's ready and waiting, but it looks like David's on his Todd. Kevin can't make it today. As always, they've left the Duke to look after all the bits and pieces. So I'm here trying to sell their merchandise. It's coming up now. £40 is the reserve. It's something or nothing, but will it bring 40 quid? It's a toss of the coin. Let's find out. Must start him at 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, looking at 40. They're looking at 40. Are they going to get 40? With me at 35 pound so far. Anybody else for 40 pound for it? Got to be 40 to move on. Anybody else want it? 35 pound, have we done? 40 new bid. Who's on 45? It's going to go standing bid at 40. Phew. Suddenly, someone's put the hand up 40 pounds, take away the commission 33 pounds, and seeing he only paid £20 for it at a school auction, well, you're in front, Kevin. That's the real deal. It certainly is, David. Well done, Kevin, and an extra £8 not to be sniffed at. Coming up, David's trying to put a ring on someone's finger. I know for a fact in Newcastle, lots of girls get engaged. Lots of girls have boyfriends who like to buy them jewellery. Why, amen. Find out if Joe will accept his proposal after the break. Where have you been? Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. Across the den, Tanya's hoping to put a twinkle in Joe's eye. I've brought a golden diamond ring in today and I'm looking for a minimum of £250. I would like to pay about £150 for it. They're not that fashionable at the moment, sadly. Oh dear, that's taken the shine right off. You've brought this little ring? Yes, diamond and gold ring, which actually belongs to my grandma. Right. She used to work in a jeweller's shop, liked it, actually intended to buy it for my better half to wear on his little finger but he's not a jewellery person never liked it so she's just kept hold of it and seeing you guys were here today and decided to bring it along right it's a little 18 carat ring i think by the looks of things check it out here eh? just to make sure so i don't talk a lot of rubbish it's got a birmingham hallmark and it's 18 carat and it looks like it's from about 1900, 1902, something like that. It's lovely and I, I don't want, I hate it when I have to go, it's lovely, but it's one of those things that's not terribly fashionable. They're known in the trade as gypsy rings. Right. 
It's just one of those styles that's fallen out of favour at the moment. We'll make an offer on it and see how you feel about it. Okay. Um, right, so if we said um, £50, £100. Carry on. <laughs> £120. £130. No. I like the positive no. No. So what did you want for it? At least another hundred. I, I, I can't see it. I'm sorry. Right. I think it's a nice thing. I mean, I'll go to 140, but I do know that they're just difficult little items to move along. I think we'd rather hold on to it than let it go for 140, definitely. Right. I think you need to have a bit of advice. Yes, please. Yeah? Yes. Well, let me try and give you some advice. First of all, when you arrived today, what were you hoping for? At least 250. Okay. Well, I think you're probably on the mark because the independent value was on the auction. It they're all pretty much in that two to two fifty. So at the right. moment we have one hundred and forty pounds. That's right. So I'm going to say perhaps a little bit more. Not the most easy thing to sell, but at the moment one hundred and forty quid, just a little bit light. I know for a fact in Newcastle, lots of girls get engaged. <laughs> Lots of girls have boyfriends who like to buy them jewellery. Why, hey man, worth a little bit more. So, Tanya, you've heard what David had to say. Yes. Um, I, I'm sorry, I'm sticking with my 140. It might appear mean, but I, I know how difficult these little rings are to sell. What would you like to do? To auction, please. To auction? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you Thank very you. much for bringing it in. Thank you very much. I thought Joe's offer was very mean. Looking forward to taking the ring to auction and hopefully I will get the 250 that I wanted. I didn't feel mean about offering £140 because that was the value that I saw it at. If it's worth more to someone else, that's fine. Fingers crossed. Let's hope that person's waiting to bid for it in the auction. Now, just before it comes up under the gavel, didn't you fancy this yourself gold diamonds? No. It's a gypsy ring. It's a bit bulky for me. So is it a bit too over the top for you? Do I you think, think so. Yeah. OK. You see, everyone likes different styles, and so you're thinking, no, it's not for me. Yeah. It's here in the sale room. You turn down 140, the reserve is 250. Is it going to make that reserve? Must start the bidding at 200 pounds for each. Straight in at 200 pounds. 200 bid with me so far. But it's quiet in the sale room. 200 is bid on commission. We need more than that. Any, any advance with me at 200? Anybody else want it? It's going to go at 200 pounds. Hold it, are we? Nope. OK, £200, it didn't make the reserve. Disappointed? Not really. We'll, we'll keep it. You've got to keep another, it? For another year or so. OK. On the day, it didn't make its reserve, so it's going home with you. The real deal is going back to the dealer's day. Why, I Joe, 140 quid. That was you, love. Don't worry, Tanya. You'll find the right finger for your ring next time. I often look around the sale room trying to find something which I think is interesting to talk to you, our viewers at home, about. Sometimes it's a fine piece of furniture, a piece of textile, a piece of glass, bronze, whatever. But what I'm looking for is something which has potential, something which is perhaps a sleeper, something which is underestimated by the auctioneer. Now this caught my eye, and what it is, it's a mushroom lamp, cut glass, produced late Victorian, latter part of the 19th century, but it's just how I would like to find it. It's come from someone's home, and I'll tell you how I know. It's dirty, it's dusty. This has been stored in a cupboard, in an attic, perhaps in an outbuilding for a long time. 
but it's a bit of a gem because a little bit of cleaning and this will gleam. Have a look at the fittings. At the moment, those fittings are dirty and discoloured. It will have to be sent away to a specialist restorer and re-silver plated. Then a modern bayonet fix will be put on top of there so the bulb can be held, a flex put through, bulbs put in, lit up and it will look dramatic, it will light up the whole room. I think this example is quite superb because of its size. Now the estimate is about 80 to 120 pounds. It's worth a lot more than that. It's worth at least 300 quid, anything under that, and it's a bargain. Always look for something which you are going to enjoy when you take it home. I could enjoy this. Thanks, David, and we'll find out just how much it goes for in a few moments' time. Meanwhile, let's pop back to the dealer's den where Carol has brought in some fiery objects from the 1930s. But is Brenda excited? Um, not terribly in vogue at the moment, um, but there might be a buyer out there. I'll see if I can buy them a small amount of money. I'd like Brenda to offer me at least 200 for them, because um, I think they're worth it, they're old. Good luck, Carol. You might have your work cut out with Brenda. So, Carol, where are these from? Um, my husband found them on demolition um, in an old church. Found them on the demolition yeah, in, in an, an old, old church? church what we're pulling down, yeah. What, local to here? Um, I'd say so, yeah. Um, yeah. Could have been Sheffield, I don't know. Oh, it okay. works all over He York. finds all sorts of things to say. Well, these are the latest ones about a year ago. Oh, so. OK. Yeah. So, um, enamel usually cracks yeah. or chips very, yeah. very easily. So, he's, he's looked after them OK. Yeah. So we've got a George V yeah. um, water bucket here, mm -hmm. um, which has really had quite a bit of damage yeah. on the top, hasn't it? Yeah. And the paintwork's gone off the handle. Um, but the crest is kept in fairly nice condition. Yeah. Um, so you didn't want to keep them? If no, if I couldn't get rid of them, I was going to put a plant in it. Okay. You know what I mean? So. All right. Shall I put some money on the table, see where we go? Yeah, please. All right. So is this money for you? Well, for a sweet, yeah, T towards a sweet. Oh, towards a sweet. Uh, what a three-piece sweet type of yeah. thing. Not a sweet sweetie. No, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, Twenty. Forty pounds. Um, can you go higher? Because they are old. Yeah, so am I. <laughs> and I'm, I'm getting there. <laughs> um, I think the top of that is mm -hmm. making me say not much more because basically it is so far gone. Um, it looks its age, but mm. it's, it has been through the wars a bit. Literally through the wars. I'm looking like for at least 100 for them. Oh, no chance. Not with me. It's 70? No. Oh, 60? No. Just... Mm. I'll do that. I'll do 50. Okay, put another five. No, you've got sure. five pounds more than I would have given you because I haven't no. got a fiver in my purse, so. Yeah, okay then. You Let's sure? Yeah. Absolutely sure. Yep. You don't yep. want to put a plant in there? No. <laughs> Looks no, like I've you. got to. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, thank, Carol. Thanks very much. <laughs> Um, I was quite surprised Carol wanted £200 for those because they're really not worth it. Um, so now I've got three fire signs because I've got one in the shop. So three to sell now and a fire bucket. I need a few firemen in my shop. Don't we all? Remember that lamp David thought was worth £300? Let's see what it will bring in the sale room. Coming up now is that item that caught my eye in the sale room. What we've got is a mushroom lamp. It was nice, it was original, it was a bit dusty. It wants a little bit of work, but it could be made into a very spectacular lamp. The good news is the estimate's only 80 to 120. I think it'll bring better than that. Commission's forced me to start bidding at 120 pound. Needs to be 130. Cheap. 130, 140 with me, 150. 160, 170, 160 on commission. Anybody else at 170? 
We're going to sell at 160. Fair warning. Sold commission. The gavel has just gone down at 160 quid. I'm going to say that's an absolute bargain. Needs a little bit of work, a little bit of silver plating work and some electrical fittings, but it will look absolutely superb when it's finished. Coming next. Is there a Dalek in the house? <laughs> <laughs> it's our dealer being a little bit mean at £30. <laughs> Find out after the break. Welcome back to Bradford, where people are still queuing with their antiques and collectibles. Hello, Hello. Nice to meet you. Over at Tim's table, Susan's come along with her little friend. I've brought in today a tin toy robot. It's in full working order. It's been in the attic for donkey's years and I'd like some child to get benefit from it now. So I'm here to get as much as I can for it and fight tooth and nail. <laughs> 20th Century Collectibles is, I have to say, my weak spot. My Achilles heel when it comes to this show. So, just watch and see everybody. <laughs> we aren't going anywhere, Tim. Now, is this yours? Not really, no. It belonged to my brother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> so you've he's no, long, he's no longer here, so... Uh, so you're selling it? Yeah, yeah. Did he have that as a child then? Yeah. All yeah. right, so uh, do you like it? I think it's cute, yeah. <laughs> Cute. I don't think cute <laughs> is the cute. right word for a robot. <laughs> it's not very fluffy, is it? For no, cute. he just stands there and looks at you. Does he work? Yeah. Shall I have a go? Yes, Do I are. wind it? No, you just press that lever on his tummy. That one there? That's right. Mm. <laughs> I'll just stop him now. Right, well, my limited knowledge of robots is that he is called Robbie the Robot and he is from a film called Forbidden Planet. Now, he has got something missing there, hasn't he? No, I don't know. Should have another one of those. I think they're meant to be his ears. And I'm going to impress you now I with... Hope so. <laughs> The maker of your robot, so <laughs> is a company called Yashia Cow. Thank you. <laughs> it doesn't sound very nice. It could be the pronunciation <laughs> there. You see, the only other word I know in Japanese is sushi. Right. Right, value. £20. Well, no, if you start at the top of the pile there. <laughs> He's working. He is working. Yeah. He's original. Yeah, go on. And he's gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> do you really think he's gorgeous, <laughs> yeah, Sue? Do yeah. you? And some teenage boy would like that in his bedroom, definitely. Right. What about 30 pounds, Sue? <laughs> 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 Sue, it's our dealer being a little bit mean. At £30. <laughs> the independent valuers and auctioneer say 30 to £50. Pounds. <laughs> well, if I don't get any more, I'm going to exterminate you. <laughs> <laughs> exterminate if he doesn't give more. Yeah. Well, do you know the entertainment value of that alone? <laughs> See, it's a high eye, so. Um, well, do you know, for, for that, for that stellar it's worth performance, yes, master-winning performance, say yeah. <laughs> £40. Is and he's got you that extra tenner, because I were going to stick at 30 oh, yeah. With the robot performance, I thought, mm. So there's not a fiver in that pile? Absolutely not, so. <laughs> No, no, I'm sticking at 40 yeah. But... I'll take 40 for him. Right, Thank we've you. got a deal then. Right. Thank you very Thank much, you. Sue. I thought Tim was very fair. I would have liked a little bit more, but 
I knew he wasn't going to give me any more. The one thing I do know is that me and Robbie dance very similar. Oh dear. Better stay off the dance floor, Tim. Have you ever fancied coming on the show? Because it's very, very simple. All you have to do is log on to ITV.com, look for Dickinson's Real Deal, and find out when we're in your area. Then you just turn up on the day. It's as simple as that. And I'll look forward to meeting you. Now, Alison has something for David, and it looks like we've saved the best till last. I brought along a pendant, a bracelet, and a pair of earrings in 18 white carat gold and diamonds. Um, I'm not prepared to take any less than a thousand pounds. They are modern, but they are lovely. Very, very nice looking jewellery. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. Are you offering, David? Well, you brought some beautiful jewellery in here. Tell me something about it. Um, I bought it with some inheritance money, and I thought I'd treat myself. But unfortunately, I lost the bracelet at my husband's funeral. And then it turned up two weeks later, somebody had found it outside the church. How and lucky. I've never worn them since. How lucky. Mm. Well, there would have been a lot of money, I'm sure. Mm. You bought them out of a, a High Street Jewellers, did you? Yes. So what we've got here is a pair of diamond earrings. Mm -hmm. We've got a diamond line bracelet and a diamond drop on an 18 karat chain. Mm -hmm. They're in the right coloured gold, of course. Mm -hmm. Everyone seems to like the white gold these days. They do, actually, yes. Versus the, the other, the gold gold. Mm. Oh, it comes to a lot of money, this. I'll just yes. quickly look at the uh, little diamond studs. These look like sort of about half a carat a piece, I would imagine. Yep, and these are set in 18 karat gold. Two carats in the lime bracelet, set in nine carats, which is unusual. Oh, is it? Mm. Oh, right. And just over half a carat in the, in the drop. Mm -hmm. Very pretty. Mm. Very. <laughs> I'll need a lot of money to buy this lot. Yes. Alison. <laughs> well, I'll get the cash out and see if we can buy these. Wow. <laughs> 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300, 350, 400, 450, 500. I know that's no good, is it? No. Well, Alison, I'm not going to mess about. I think we'll change that straight away for a thousand. Very nice. Are we, uh... Just nicely warming. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, modern jewellery, as we know, David, there's quite a lot of diamond content here. Independent valuers have looked at this very carefully and the auctioneer, and they've tried to take into account that it's modern jewellery, and they've said 12 to 1400, 12 to 1500. So I'm going to say, we want to start thinking at least £1,200. Good lot to buy, easy to retail. Dandy Dave, <laughs> get that out onto one of your stalls <coughs> yes. at one of these markets, you know, showing the teeth as you do. Hello. Yes. And okay. then you should be able to sell that. <laughs> right, Alison, I've no chance of buying this uh, for my price, have I? <laughs> Let's say, uh, I'll go straight in at £1,200. What do you think to that? That's looking better. Yes. It's not a yes. Mm. We'll try a little bit more. How about another 50? Well, I wouldn't lose them. They're so pretty. I would give 12.50. Are you happy at that? Yes, I'm quite happy with that. So am I. Good. Yes. Thank you for the deal. Thank you. Thanks for bringing them along. Enjoy the money. I will do. Thank you very much. I'm very pleased with the deal that I got very pleased, so I'm going to treat myself to a holiday in Cuba. Well, I've got a granddaughter who's uh, going to be 18 very, very soon, so maybe some of those diamonds might go to her. It's a sweet thought, but it's not going to add much to your bank balance. Have our other dealers done any better today? Jo loved the Victorian epaulettes, but was worried she'd never find a buyer. I may be buried with them, but I own them. And she still owns them. Brenda was equally worried she couldn't find a buyer for the Dick Clark memorabilia. If there's anybody out there, you can buy it from me. <laughs> Her offer still stands as she's yet to find a customer. 
As for the George V fire bucket... I need a few firemen in my shop. Or anyone for that matter, as it's still sitting there. Tim was really confident he'd do well with the clock case. You've got to use your imagination. And I can see this clock when it's the finished item and it will be fabulous. He cashed it in for a quick but small profit. He couldn't make head or tail of Robbie the Robot. And David made him pay more than he wanted. Is for dealer being a little <laughs> bit mean? <laughs> it didn't matter though because he still reaped some reward. David invested a hefty sum in the diamond and white gold jewellery. He sold the bracelet and the necklace for £575 and keeping to his word gave his granddaughter the diamond earrings for her 18th birthday. David, you old sweetie. Wow. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. See you.